Before we start this video, I have two warnings. The first is that the following video contains graphic violence, in order to illustrate pathology that often occurs from traumatic injury. And second, the gameplay in this video was captured by our friends over at Video Game Medicine from The Last of Us Part 2 and may contain spoilers. So I'll be talking about penetrating neck injuries, and no, not the ones that happen from zombies. I'm talking about injuries resulting from gunshot or stab wounds, or injuries from other debris, like shrapnel or glass, that violate the platysma, which is a thin superficial muscle in the anterolateral aspect of the neck that extends from the upper thorax and shoulder regions to the mandible. These types of injuries can be life-threatening because of the many delicate and complex structures located in this region such as airway and gastrointestinal structures, along with the complex web of neurovascular bundles and vessels. Kill all trespassers. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. That doesn't make any sense. Direct order, man. No, let's talk to her. Let's figure out what she knows. I don't give a fuck what she knows. You saw what she did to the others? You have no idea how many people she might be with. This might be an ambush, I don't care Mike. how many people she's with. We will find them and we'll kill them. Can you just think for yourself for a quick second right now? Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> We generally describe the location of injury by zones, with the neck being divided into three of them. Zone one includes the base of the neck and thoracic inlet, extending from the sternal notch and clavicles to the cricoid cartilage. Some of the structures you'll find here include the apices of the lungs, thoracic duct, and thoracic outlet vasculature, like subclavian arteries and veins, among the other anatomical structures listed here. The region of zone 2 continues cephalad, or upwards, from the cricoid cartilage to the angle of the mandible, and contains structures like the common carotid arteries, larynx and pharynx, the vagus and recurrent laryngeal nerves, plus all of these. Zone 3 includes the region above the angle of the mandible, up to the base of the skull. Here you'll find cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12, the sympathetic chain, and the distal portion of the internal carotid arteries, along with all of the structures listed here. This zone designation and labeling your neck anatomy like this not only allows us to organize the structures in the neck, but also has implications for management and prognosis. For example, mortality rates for penetrating neck injuries appear to be highest with zone 1 injuries. That's because of the proximity of the mediastinal structures and the severity of the vascular injuries caused in this region. Zone 2 injuries are the most common, followed by zone 1 and then zone 3. Of the many anatomical structures within the neck, the aerodigestive tract is injured most frequently. These are things like the larynx, trachea, and esophagus. This is closely followed by vascular injuries. In fact, exsanguination is the most common cause of immediate death in penetrating neck injuries, with the carotid artery being the structure that is most often involved. And finally, direct injury to the spinal cord can occur, but happen at a much lower frequency when compared to the previously mentioned air digestive tract and vascular injuries. And that wraps it up for penetrating neck injuries. And again, we want to thank our friends over at Video Game Medicine for the gameplay footage. If you're interested in seeing more of The Last of Us gameplay, I'll leave their channel link in the description below. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to stay up to date when we post more videos like this one.